Welcome to part two of our WooTickets new user primer. If you followed part one, you'll know that by this point we have downloaded, installed, and activated WooCommerce, WooTickets, and the events calendar, and we've also plugged in our WooTickets license key to ensure that we get access to future updates and support. Now let's actually set up our first ticketed event. In order to do that, from the dashboard of my site, I'm going to click into this events menu in the left-hand sidebar, and I'm going to hit add new. If you've ever set up events with the Events Calendar or Events Calendar Pro before, this is going to be a very familiar process to you. When it comes to setting up the event itself, nothing has changed. The tickets is a new experience, which we'll see in a second, but configuring the event is totally familiar. You'll add the title, the description, set a category, say when you want the event to take place. I'm going to say this is going to be on the 17th, this coming Saturday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. is fine. I'll plug in a venue. Of course, this address is not a palace, but merely a apartment in which I once lived. Event organizer details. If I want to have one, sure, I'll plug in a name. Maybe give a phone number as well. The event now is configured. We could publish this right now, and it would be just like any other The Events Calendar event. But it wouldn't have the tickets tied to it. That's what we need to do right now. So we're going to scroll down into this next meta box for tickets, and we're going to hit add new ticket. You'll see that brings up a whole bunch of new fields where, as you might have guessed, you will set up your first ticket for this event. Sell using is always going to be WooCommerce for now. As we start to add new ticketing services into this framework, you'll hopefully start to see different radio buttons there so you can select WooCommerce, Eventbrite, Eventful, etc. But as it stands, WooCommerce is your only option, so you don't have much you can do with this. Just leave it as is and go on to the ticket name. Ticket name is going to be what you want the ticket to appear as. People on the front end will see this, and a common example that you see used is something like adults. Ticket description also appears on the front end. What do you want to say about this specific ticket? There you go. Give a description of what it's going to come with. Now the price will be how much it costs. Zero or empty for free tickets. You can totally leave this blank if you want to. But since I'm giving things away with this ticket, I want to charge something. I'm going to say this is going to be 15 bucks. Start sale allows me to say, when do I want tickets to go on sale? If I don't select anything, tickets will be on sale immediately from when the event is published. Otherwise, could select a date, pick it here, and then set the time. I want these tickets to be on sale that now, so I'm not going to worry about setting that but you do have the option. Same goes for the end sale. If I want tickets to go on sale and then end at a certain time before the event, I can absolutely configure that here the same way that I could have configured the start sale. If I don't leave an end sale, it is worth noting and it's important to note that tickets will be on sale all the way through the end of your event. This means that if somebody wants to come two hours into a five hour event and buy a ticket, they will be able to. Make sure you set the start sale and end sale if you want control over that, because otherwise it's just going to give your users free reign. I'm going to leave this because I want tickets to be on sale forever, up until the event goes on, until the event is finished. Stock, how many of these are you going to have? You know, let's say for adult tickets, we have 200. Once those 200 are sold out, there's going to be a message on the front end showing users, sorry, there's no more of these. If I want to add more later, I can, but for now, let's leave it at 200. The SKU is behind the scenes. This isn't something that a lot of your front end users are going to see, but it does allow you to keep track of different types of tickets. For the adult tickets, for example, I'm going to do TST for test site, ADU. These help, these help you keep track of things as you start to look through your order list on the back end, and as your products start to get mingled with WooCommerce products, it'll be an easy way of starting to differentiate your tickets. Here we go. First ticket has been saved. You'll notice it shows here cost, how many have been sold, what the description is, and you'll notice if I hover over it, I have a few different options. I can edit, just going to bring me back to the very same screen we just looked at. I could delete it entirely, which is going to remove it. I could edit in WooCommerce, which allows me to edit the ticket, gives me these same fields, but a whole lot more, and edits them within the WooCommerce interface. Or I could do report, which is going to generate a specific report of this ticket, how many of these tickets have sold, what the cost, etc. Notice there's also an event sales report up above, but that does differ in that it is for the full event, whereas the ticket specific reports are just for given tickets. So you can set up as many tickets as you wish to here on the back end of your site. If I want to have a second one, we'll say seniors, nothing for seniors, we'll give them for free. We'll let those tickets be on sale as well. Say there's a hundred of them. And for this one, we're going to say this, the SKU is TST, 
SNR. Both tickets are crafted. I could add as many more as I wanted. If I wanted to get rid of seniors, hit delete there. It'll disappear on the spot. The only other step now would be actually publishing my event and viewing the finished product over on the front end. There we go. Our tickets are there. And we'll go over ordering them in the next screencast. Come back in step three. We'll see you there.